My teacher always says that you play who you are that your relationship to the instrument is the same relationship that you have with yourself, everybody else, and everything in your waking hour. A lot of us get frustrated in the practice room when we can't seem to do or make do what we want the instrument to do for us. There's a lot of doing in that sentence. And that seems to be what we are all busy with doing instead of being. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Every movement that you make on the keyboard will have some sort of response from the instrument, a feedback, if you may. And if you can sensitize yourself to this, you have the key to playing repeated notes. Welcome back to Joy of Practicing. I'm your host, Ferdi Talan. The most common logic to playing repeated notes is to change fingers consecutively. This works because you renew the relationship with the keyboard each and every change of finger. And the fingers are different weight and length, so they produce different intensity of sound. But to my mind, this slows down your momentum and doesn't make it sound very fluid because you have an active sound each and every time. Now, if this is what you're after, then you're fine. But if you are after a more fluid and rapid repeated notes, these are some of the things that you can consider. Let's take an example from Ravel's Alborada del Grazioso, and I'll do it twice for you. This time, I'm just going to do it with one finger. You see how there's less movement in this. This becomes busy. The other option is to change just with two fingers. You must break them down into smaller groups because, remember, playing two notes 27 times is much better than playing 54 notes under one breath. In order to play this fluidly, I don't see the repeated G sharps as 16, 24, 32, or however many they're supposed to repeat, but I break them down into smaller groups of twos and threes and I restart at the beginning of every group. So I'll slow it down and exaggerate. This is two, and this is three. This is two, two again, two, now we're two threes. Threes, twos, Not all of them are active. I'm not doing that. I'm doing... If you are changing fingers, you are also figuring out which one is the active passive. So let's just say I'm going to do the standard 3-2-1 fingering. See, the first one is the only active one, and then the second one, I'm changing finger, but I'm letting it just fall. Same with if you're only changing with two fingers. So... I'm alternating between an active thumb and an active second finger if I do it with two fingers. After you've done grouping and figure out which one is active and which ones are passive, it's time to differentiate the timing because they're not all equal. It's, I'm not playing them all equal, it's... 
this is slower because I have to go here. And I have to make the impression that this is a second voice. So, technically I'm leaving the key a little sooner, but I take a little bit more time so I can be on the E sharp and the B. So, so they, they're a little slightly longer, but I don't stay on the note longer. I prepare the next note. And then these are fast. Bop, 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 bop. The ones that I are, I'm, I'm, I'm accenting it so that it can become clear in your ear, but it's, it's, it's a slow down. It's just not an accent. See, like here, for example, these two notes are not the same. The second one is more and longer. You can do it also the other way, but it has a very different effect. It, whichever you fancy. To me, that's better. Doing things just because that's what half of the world are doing when encountering situations like this is quite unimaginative. If you allow yourself to stay curious instead of complacent, you will find ways to fulfill what you really want to achieve. And this goes in and out of the instrument. Don't let the pages, the notes in the pages kind of restrict your imagination because ultimately what you want to do is you don't want to be a technician on the keyboard. You want to be a musician, and the goal for a musician, I think, is the end sound, the end product. So, for example, if you take a look at the very beginning of this repeated notes. Yeah, it's a different case than this. This one, I have a continuing repeated notes that becomes a basis for me to time the other notes. Now here, I have to coordinate the right hand and the left hand in order to be able to execute this. Because this connects here. Now, if that's true, then I could certainly do it this way. Right? Or I could do it this way. So just taking the B sharp with my pinky and taking the top D sharp with the left hand. Another way I could do it. Take the first of the repeated notes with the left hand. Or if you wanted to change fingers. They all produce different result and different effect, and you have to figure out what works for you. So another way of taking a look at it is what instrument is Ravel referring to when he's composing this? in tempo or not I'm slightly under right now but it produces the most direct sound for me that kind of represents a casting it repeated notes aside this tough year is coming to an end and I want to thank all of you who have spent time watching and subscribing to my channel hearing that these short videos can help you find new ways to commune with yourself in the daily practice has been the biggest motor for me to keep on producing more episodes. Here's to a better year ahead. I will see you in 2021.